All right, hello everybody. My name is Massimo Bazzo and I'm an interviewer with Altitude Accelerator. Today I'm joined with Bedad Bayrami from Edgecom AI. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi Massimo, my name is Bedad Bayrami. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Edgecom Energy and I'm super excited to be here at Collision today. All right, so would you like to introduce your company a little more in what you're doing now, especially with AI in the technologi technological landscape? Absolutely. So um, the world of energy used to be really simple, right? So it used to be that there was big power plants that would produce energy and then uh, facilities would consume that energy. Now with solar, with battery systems, with electric vehicles, the grid of the past no longer exists. Now there's a new grid. And what that means is that there's new pricing programs, there's new incentive structures, there's new technology that industrial facilities really need to navigate to be able to get the most bang for their buck on what they spend on energy and to make sure that they're producing things efficiently, reducing emissions. So all these things go hand in hand and Edgecom Energy provides a tool that allows large facilities to navigate this change uh, through IoT solutions, through software, through machine learning. And um, now what we've added is we've added an AI energy co-pilot, which is basically um, an energy manager in your pocket that's able to answer any kind of question regarding energy and emissions and help facilities reduce energy consumption and save uh, significant emissions as well. We're really excited to talk about it here at Collision today. For sure. Um, what do you think one of the biggest struggles is in navigating some emission costs and how can we use AI, especially in this new landscape, to help reduce emission costs and increase sustainability? Yeah, so I think the first part is really understanding what are the programs that exist, right? Um, so first you got to understand what programs exist, what are the opportunities for your specific facility. Second is being able to analyze the right data, right? So I need data of what's happening in my facility, I need data of what's happening on the grid. So having all that analyzed for you uh, requires a lot of expertise, right? So this is where the co-pilot comes in. The co-pilot makes all that easy. And now, instead of the energy manager having to sit there for hours and hours and just crunch numbers, um, or even if it's a CFO or a controller who wants to do that, now they're able to use the AI to really get the answers and get the insights specifically for their facility based on the grid that they're on. So it makes it much easier to navigate these programs. These programs are complicated. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of information. And it, it really gets really complicated really fast. So the AI really allows us to simplify that and really just get the answers of what can I do in my facility to reduce emissions and what's the data that backs that up. That sounds awesome. Would you be able to show us a little bit about this display here? Uh, yeah, so what we have here today is we have our AI powered energy co-pilot. So if you are, uh, again, a CFO, a uh, plant manager, and you want to ask specific questions about how much emissions did I consume uh, this week, or how much d emissions did I produce this week, or uh, what were some of the uh, energy consuming patterns in my facility, you're able to just ask the right questions to the co-pilot, and it's able to answer that question for you. So uh, hold this for a second, I'll, I'll type it in, right? Yeah, awesome. So for example, you could say, what sensors are you connected to, right? So now this on the back end, it's connected to our IoT platform. So it's able to tell you, okay, I'm connected to these sensors. And then now you're able to query specific questions for those sensors, right? Um, how much emissions did that product that I produced? How much emissions did that actual product? We had a company that we talked to a few weeks ago and what they're using this for is to actually understand this batch of product that I made that needs to get shipped to Europe what were the emissions associated with this specific batch versus the same batch that was manufactured one or two weeks ago would have different emissions because of the time that they used energy from the grid. And this is able to answer all that for you. So if you hold this. So these are the sensors that it's connected to. And then you're able to say, uh, how much did either one? Right? So how much did it cost you in, in dollar value or how much did it cost you in terms of how many emissions? So it's able to make those recommendations for you right now. All right, I guess my next question would be, what are your next steps with Edgecom AI and how do you think you're further gonna use AI in this industry? Yeah, so a AI is really just another tool in the toolbox, right? Um, we've built this platform using traditional machine learning models. It's a cloud-based. And uh, customers have been getting a lot of value from how easy it is uh, to use and, and you know the insights and the data that it provides. 
Um, the AI is just another level on top of that. And what it's really enabling is it's enabling um, non-technical people to ask very technical questions, right? So in the past, if you were an energy manager and you wanted to process this data, you needed to have really deep Excel or Python understanding. Now, if you're a controller and you want to understand some of these intricacies of energy, it's able to do that for you, right? So right now, we've trained it on all of our existing data. Um, and now we're going beyond that. Um, we're launching a, 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 an MVP with ABB. So there's a potential that we're going to be in 100,000 uh, industrial facilities in early 25. And that just speaks to the value that the co-pilot is able to bring, right? It just makes it easy to use for those end users. And they don't really have to um, understand the, the intricacies of how to build models, how to run baseline models, how to do energy saving calculations. The co-pilot is basically able to do all that for you and just give you the answers that you need so you can operate your plant. That's your job, right? Your job is not to manage energy. Your job is to operate a plant, uh, operate a manufacturing facility. So the co-pilot really just gives you the answers and makes the recommendations of what the improvements are. Um, and, and there's a variety of use cases that we're testing right now, right? So modeling energy consumption for the future, making recommendations for how to improve. Eventually, we're going to add recommendations for retrofits and upgrades to your facility as well. So there's a lot that can be done here. Combining that grid data, that facility data with the co-pilot, it's, it's really, there's no, um, there's no end to what it's going to be able to do for industrial facilities. I guess one of my final questions would be, where do you see the sustainability and clean tech industry in five to 10 years? Not even just AI, but just in general. Oh, that's a really good question. So. I think we're going to see more and more automation. I think people are starting to trust automation more and more. Um, so, um, you know, this trend has been going on for the past 30 years. It's nothing new. But I think now with the advent of these, uh, you know, natural language AI models, um, non-technical people can work in automation more efficiently and more easily. So this is enabling a whole new subset of people to get involved in automation, to get involved in manufacturing. Um, so I think that trend is just going to continue. Um, the other side of it is, um, you know, the, the AI models really taking, um, I don't want to say taking over, but really us trusting them more to actually run some parts of our day-to-day -day task flows, right? Um, right now, it's kind of like we're weary, right? We're a little bit scared. We still want a person on top of it. But I think as time goes on and we start to trust these models more, it's going to be, I tell it what to automate and I let it actually do the automation, right? And I trust it more and more over time. So I think in five years, we'll look back and, and, and we'll see that there's a lot of automation, there's a lot of AI um, machine learning models uh, combined with uh, natural language processing uh, to let these LLMs do more of our day-to-day -day tasks for sure. Okay, I think that concludes our interview. Thank you so much to Bedev Barami from Edgecom AI. We hope we have a great time at Collision Conference and thank you once again. Yeah, thank you, Massimo. Excited to be here and super happy to be a part of the Altitude Accelerator. So thanks for having us.